So at the beginning, we're going to think about a function going from R2 into R. So basically the lowest number of dimensions. That's not 1 and 1. So we'll go from R2 to R1. And we'll think of the surface graph. So our xy coordinates will be uh, in the domain, and then the z coordinate is the function value at that xy coordinate. So we just have to write xy is in domain of f. So I'm going to try to draw in three dimensions here. So think of this as a sheet that's kind of bending a little bit, uh, sort of downwards. And we're going to look at this point right here. So there'll be some point on the xy plane. And the point I drew on the surface will be x0, comma, y0 comma, f of x not y not. So that'll be the x, y value we'll call x not y not. Now we want to think about if we go in a direction, we have the x axis, the y axis. At the point on the plane, if I want to go in the x direction, I want to know how does the height change as x changes. So we're at the point, and we want to go along the x-axis. So I'm drawing an arrow that's going to be parallel to the x-axis. So it's going along with the x-axis. Uh, projector's starting to flicker. Uh-oh. All right, so if we go along the x direction, does it look like, and I really didn't mean to draw the back part of this arrow up, really just wanted to think about going that direction. Does it look like we're going uphill or downhill? Downhill a little bit. So the number we get, this partial derivative we get, is going to be a number and it's going to be negative if we're going in the x direction, we're going slightly downhill. So Back when we were doing uh, functions that had one dimension input, one dimension output, we were always going to the right. Now the problem is there's not just one axis we can go along. We can go along the x-axis. We can also go along the y-axis. So I'm going to draw a second arrow. We'll go with orange. This is going to be parallel with the y-axis. So I'm going to start from this point and then go parallel to the y-axis. Does it look like we're going uphill or downhill? Downhill, probably a little bit steeper than the other one. So this will also be negative when we're going in the y direction. And we'll keep it red here. So we have a new we, this is a, I believe is a delta, a lowercase delta. The capital delta looks like this. So this is going to be a lowercase delta. I know it looks nothing like the big delta, unless you draw your big delta more like that. Then it kind of looks like that. But This partial 
delta right here means partial derivative. So it's going to be as x changes. That's the reason we put d over dx. Now I'm just going to say d. I'm not going to say curly d every time, even though curly d means partial derivative. You're going to see in a lot of books it looks a little bit more. Some people draw it differently. Some people put a almost looks like a figure 8 with a little bit of it erased. So depending on who's drawing, it looks a little bit different. So I'll write the difference quotient. This is limit h approaches 0. So I'm going to write something that won't make any sense. Will I or won't I? No, we'll just write the one that. So I want to change my x along the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is my x coordinate is going to be x plus h. So we're going to move a little bit in the x axis. Y is staying as it is. So nothing's happening to our y coordinate. Now this is minus f of x y divided by h. So this is the definition of a x derivative, a partial x derivative. Now this is really similar to a regular x derivative, the only difference is there's pieces that disappear if you're doing a regular, regular function with no y input. This is what it looks like if you have no y input, just erase all the y's. So this is the regular derivative you're used to. We're just changing one coordinate. This is the x coordinate. All right, so it's a lot of work to write out ddx every single time. Don't write this notation down, but I want you to think about why this would be bad to just write f prime. If I wrote f prime, how do you know if this is an x derivative? So I have to write down not just take a derivative, but take which derivative. So the way we write that, I'm not sure why it's a subscript, but we write a little x down there. That means take the x derivative. In my opinion, probably that would have been better, but I don't get to make up notation. Well, I do a little bit, but for the most part I don't. So this little subscript means take ddx derivative. So that's the partial x derivative. So take a minute right now, do everything, rewrite everything we did, but partial y derivative this time. So I want to see you write the difference quotient, and it should be really clear what subscript you should use over there. But rewrite the difference quotient with a y, change in y. So our derivative notation is f subscript y, and we're changing the y coordinate, so you get f of x comma y plus h. So that's your difference quotient. So let's find the equations for these lines that I drew on the board. 
So the point we're going to go through is pretty easy to find. So I'll switch back to the red pen. Let's call this LX for the line in the x direction. All right, easier to compute the point. What point are we going through? You only point this on the board. X not, Y not, F of X not, Y not. So that's the point we're going through. All right, slope. Now I have to figure out exactly what is this red arrow right here. All right, let's think about how slope is written. So I need a vector. Which coordinate of this vector is 0 for sure? One of the three coordinates of this vector are 0. Which coordinate is going to be 0? the y-coordinate. So I want to know as x changes, not as y changes. So our y-coordinate is 0. So our slope is going to be a vector now the x-coordinate and the z-coordinate are not going to be 0. Uh, it's possible your z-coordinate is 0 if you're going flat at that moment, but generally your z-coordinate won't be 0. So here's the tricky part. <clears throat> so the z-coordinate, one way to think about it, if I go 1 in the x-direction, how far am I going in the z-direction? So how does slope work? If you go one, in, 1 over, then the rise will be the derivative. So I have the derivative down here, the x derivative. So it's 1, comma, 0, comma, fx of x naught, y naught. That will tell me how much I'm going up or how much I'm going down. So we just took that derivative to figure out if I'm going in the x direction, how much am I going up or down? And I can also find the slope in along the y direction. In this case, the x change will be 0. The y change will be 1, because I want to go to the right. And now how much up or down? will be fy of x not y not. So that'll be the change in the y direction. And then either case, your line L of t, it's always going to be p naught plus MT. So that's our parameterized line. Start with a point, and then your slope is going to be a vector times T. So that's how we write equations of lines, parameterized equations of lines. So our first example, f of x, y will be 2y over x plus cos y uh, over y plus cos x. So 2y over y plus cos x. f x derivative is d dx of f or d dx of 2y over y plus cos x. So this is our first partial derivative. We're taking an x derivative. That means y is constant. So 
So in this case, think of y as constant. Before we use the letter c for constants a lot, or maybe k's or n's, so you could think about that y as c. Do I have to use a quotient rule? Here's the only part that's changing. So I can use the constant multiple rule if I want to. So if I want to use a constant multiple rule, I'll write it as ddx of 2y times y plus cos x to the negative first power. So I'm going to write it as a product with a constant multiple. So what I just used was a constant multiple rule that let me bring the 2y outside the x derivative. This may seem weird, but remember, I brought a constant, something that doesn't change as x changes. So it's constant with respect to x. Not constant overall, but constant with the derivative that we're taking. All right, I do need a chain rule here. So I have negative 1 times y plus cos x to the negative 2 power. <clears throat> so that took care of the negative first power. Now when we go inside, what is the x derivative of y? 0. So we're taking the x derivative of a constant. Derivative of cosine x is negative sine y, or negative sine x. And rewrite this to y sine x divided by y plus cos x squared. So that is the x derivative of f. You have to use the quotient rule for your y derivative because numerator and denominator have y's in them. So I can't use any type of constant multiple rule here. So numerator and denominator have y's. So you have to go with the full quotient rule. So I just wrote the quotient rule on the board. So go ahead and use the quotient rule. Find this derivative. You're only taking the y derivative here. Any y derivative questions off that quotient rule? Just to warn you, your brain is going to want to take an x derivative for probably at least a few days. You're going to really want to be taking x derivatives every time. But you have to fight with your brain and get out of the calculus one pattern of taking an x derivative every time. So in this case, x's were constants, which is why I got the 0 right there derivative of cosine x. The y derivative of cosine x is 0. And the y derivative of y is 1. That's how I got the 1 plus 0 right there.